Welcome back everyone. Today we are checking out the 2020, I mean 2021, I mean 2022, I mean, sorry, <clears throat> let's start this video again. Welcome back everyone. Today we are tech checking out the 2023 Trek Fuel X5. As you may have noticed a few little details about this model, that is, it is the same as before. I did not make a 2022 video because it was the same as the 2021. So I'm here to explain what the 2023 Fuel X5 is all about. Although the 2023 Fuel X5 has not changed since its previous year, it doesn't mean it's a completely wasted video. Because of the new Fuel X lineup with the all new frame, this plays a key role in the Trek full suspension lineup. This has stuck with what was the previous generations, generation 5 I believe it's called, suspension and frame design that they had. This has 140 mil on the front and 130 mil in the rear. It also keeps a more simplified frame setup and less aggressive geometry you know a little closer to where the top fuel was. Doing this is similar to shrinkflation really Essentially, if you can keep a similar bike, there is no need for any more price increases. They already have this one on the market, it's already rolling, and you already know it works well. That means you now keep a nice entry-level price to a bike which has slowly risen in costs. Let's look at the part spec and find out what keeps this bike more affordable than ever. On the rear end, we do have a 12-speed, which is nice. It is Shimano Dior, and up at the front, you have a Praxis chain ring. Nice, decent size, 30 tooth. So you're able to do a little bit of trail with this, a little bit of cross country, no issues there. 12 speed is key and critical in pretty much any full suspension model nowadays. And it's nice to start at that point, as opposed to cheaping out and going with like an 11 speed or 10 speed option. With that, they have the matching handlebar lever. So that is Dior. It is surprisingly nice. It shifts well and has some texture to it. Brake wise, they have gone with the solid recommendation from Shimano, which is the MT200s. This is probably the most widely used hydraulic disc brake out there for anything looking for good quality. Although not super adjustable, it does have good stopping force. And honestly, it's really all most people need. It'll get you slowing down the hill. It might not stop you in race speeds going down the hill, but for the average rider, this is gonna be an excellent setup of brakes. Brake rotors are a matching size at 180 and 180. So again, it just keeps that cost down, similar cheap affordable parts, which will be good for the average rider. Tire wise, this one here has XR4 comp. We have seen a couple come through with a Maxxis option, you know, similar in quality to the Recon. Obviously, they're trying for a fast rolling but tractionable tire. This one has a decent amount of tread to it, but it's also well controlled in the corners. It is the comp model, so it is not tubeless ready. And the rims which it comes with are not tubeless ready. From the beginning, you are able to make them tubeless ready, but it takes a bit of work. Front suspension wise, we are looking at the RockShox Recon Gold. So this is an air spring. It is gonna perform well. It's adjustable. You can control the compression very easily on and off. And then honestly, that's about it. There's no other real features. It works well and it does its job just fine. Rear end, you've got the affordable X-Fusion shock. This is gonna work well. Again, nothing crazy. Air adjustable, preload adjustable. Things are gonna work really well on it. It's got a simple firm and trail mode on it. So there's two options and you're gonna be able to choose where you want and uh, very quickly change that on the fly. Standard 31.6 seat post. So again, nothing wrong with that. It is more common than the 34, but 34 is kind of where everything's going. This is just where it's from. Nothing wrong with the iPhone 13, even though the iPhone 14 is out. Feature-wise, that's about it for the Fuel X5. It's a basic full suspension with a relaxed geometry, but not super aggressive in the downhills. You won't be feeling too overloaded with this bike on any trail, and it will go pretty much anywhere you want. Obviously, at race paces, that's where a bike like this would start potentially feeling the pain. 
you're gonna really need it in the double black diamonds to look at a different bike. It's a clean high performance trail bike and it sticks true to that name. The Fuley X5 has long been one of Trek's most reliable starter points. They don't generally start too small or too big. It's not like some brands who really push and build a $2,000 full suspension and then you're really getting some janky parts which hardly much better than a Canadian tire model but it's a really Canadian option for me to choose but this is actually going to perform they've put it together well and they're going to hopefully keep that price from moving it's not really shrinkflation it's more like fixflation if we don't change it we won't have to change the price much frame wise obviously it looks good they didn't do anything wrong with this frame previous generation it's going to perform well and it's going to look clean it just doesn't have capabilities for like a coil or extreme downhill options front fork max is 150 instead of a 160 on the new ones but again these are all options that are kind of overkill for the majority of people if you're just looking for a really good trail bike, there's no real reason to go any higher end. The wheels are probably the heaviest point of this bike. If I was looking to change anything, the wheels are the upgradable part. Shifting is nice, obviously upgradable, but not like this isn't good. The wheels are just a heavy lump of metal, and if you put on something nicer and then put a nicer tire on there, you're going to be able to get down to probably 32 pounds, which is pretty impressive for the spec of parts that this bike has on it. The Fuley X5 is the bike I started on. I mean, we're looking at a whole different generation. Mine was a 2011 and I miss that bike. It was reliable, it worked, and honestly, it was a piece of junk at the time. This style of bike is 10 times the bike that ever was. If you have any doubts about buying a full suspension bike, this could be a great stepping stone. Price-wise, it's actually good now. They were getting a little high price there for a while, but now Trek has really found a bit of a, a soft spot, I guess. I mean, this is still twice the price as what the old Fuley X from five, six years ago was. But like I said, those ones were pieces of junk. This one has a 1x12 Dior system on it, which is fantastic. Good, powerful hydraulic disc brakes. Good, effective suspension. You know, that RockShox Recon is now actually a very good performing fork. A dropper post. It's got a lot more features than the old ones ever could even do. And honestly, I think it will be a good choice for anyone who is still looking for a good all-around trail bike. Wants to follow anyone they want to, but they're probably not breaking trail trying to find the steepest, most gnarly trails Remy Metallia would want to go down. All right, thanks for sticking around for a review of the 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023 Fuley X5. Although it's the same, it's definitely good value as new, but keep your eye out there for used or, you know, second-hand options because you're not buying something much different. There could be a few little tweaks here and there, but not that I recall. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Good luck.